All right, welcome back, everyone. We're working on our mobile first nav bar. And we've got a nice looking nav bar styled pretty much the way we want it, behaving the way we want it to. Um, however, if we were really on a mobile device, we wouldn't have access to a mouse or we wouldn't be using one unless you like to carry one around with your cell phone, wherever you go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so instead, uh, actually a couple of things. One, this takes up a lot of real estate. So some people don't necessarily want to navigate around at the beginning. They might want to look at see what's there. So oftentimes you'll see one of those little toggle buttons that um, that will when you click it it expands and when you don't uh, when you click it again it contracts. So we're going to add one of those to our WordPress site. And so what we need to do is add a toggle. And in order to do that, we're going to go to Bootstrap and use a thing called a button and a glyphicon. So if you go to getbootstrap.com and you look at components at the very top, you're going to see this thing called glyphicons. So little icons that can be used uh, to signify all kinds of items. If we scroll down far enough, you will see, um, where did it go? There it is, right here. That's the type of glyphicon or icon that is most commonly used for a menu that when you click it will expand. In fact, if you look here, it's called Menu Hamburger. So let's take a look at how this is to be done. Your example for these stars right here is this code. A button with a type of button, a class of BTN, BTN default, and then you can set its size. And then inside of the button is a span with a class of Glyphicon. And then whatever you want to use as your Glyphicon. In this case, it's star, but in our case, it's going to be the menu hamburger. So we need to just add this um, at the very top of our nav element. So I'm just going to go in here and copy that. And what we want to do is we want to go into um, the header page. So we want to go to header.php. Now, if you're working, if you're not doing WordPress and you're just doing this on a standard site, just go to the location where you have your header code. In our case, in, in uh, WordPress, it's header.php. We want to scroll until we can see the nav element, and here it is. So nav, uh, we want to put it right after that. So we're just going to drop it in here, and we're going to tab it over. And then uh, instead of star, we're going to change that to uh, menu dash hamburger. I don't know who came up with that, although it kind of does look like a hamburger. I suppose maybe that's what they're thinking. Hit save, go back to our page, and then hit refresh and see if that toggle appears. And there it is. Oh, it says star. <laughs> so we'll fix that. That's easy. Okay, the text said star. We don't want it to say star. So I get rid of the text that's in there. So that is our code. It's a button. You give the right class, we stick it at the top. Now one of the issues we have here is this button is going to appear whether we have the window expanded or not. So if we go back and we look at it. Sorry. We go back <laughs> to the right page. There it is. And we expand it full screen. It still says, it still has that button, and we really don't want that button to appear. Um, we don't want it to appear unless we're at the narrow screen. And I got to get rid of star. I did it, but I must have forgot to click save on header, and now it should be gone. And then the size of the button probably is okay. When this menu is gone, I think that'll be okay to have it. Okay, so in our navigation style sheet, what we want to do is do kind of what we did before. For some reason, this has not been saved. So one of the things I want to do in here is we're talking about the nested links in the nav bar. Um, we're going to add the responsive toggle. So I'm going to add a little comment here for that. Okay, so in our responsive toggle, what we want to do is we want to target um, that button. In fact, we're not quite ready. I, I realize one of the things I want to do is make sure any button, we might want to use buttons for other things. So we're going to add on here responsive toggle. 
Okay, so we add that class to the button. Save your changes. Don't forget to save it. Okay. Now, one of the things that we are going to do is we're going to target this button using class only. And so one of the things that is kind of cool is you can actually target not just an item that has a class of BTN, but you can target an item that has every one of these classes in it. Let me show you how. So you're going to right click on all of these, choose copy. Then I'm going to go over to the, my navigation bar. You want to copy. You don't want to try to just hand type it because you might get it wrong. Now what you do is you add the dot here and then every space, you get rid of the space and replace it with a dot. So what we're saying is it needs to have every one of these classes in order for us to target it. And as far as specificity goes, that's one, two, three, four different class deck, uh, selectors. And so this is a fairly high scoring sort of spec uh, specific item here. Now on here, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do what we did with um, the height being auto or zero or um, an opacity of one or zero. So we're basically going to make this toggle be visible on the narrow devices, but invisible over here. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set its height to auto. And then we're going to go ahead and set the opacity to one. So when we are at a narrow width, we can see it, and it has the automatic height. And then when we are at the wider screen, we're going to make that go away. So I'm just going to copy that. Actually, I'm going to even include this responsive toggle. Copy that, paste, tab it over. And then I'm going to put on here, I'm just going to put hide responsive toggle. And on here, I'll show responsive toggle just to make it a little more clear what's going on. Save my changes. It's a good time to pause, but let me just double check to make sure it's going to work correctly. So we've got to hit refresh. All right, there's the toggle. We go full screen. Oh, it's not hidden. So what happened here? Let's check this out. Well, okay, uh, first of all, I forgot to mention that should be height of zero and an opacity of zero. So uh, we want to get rid of the height because we don't want it to take up space. And then, of course, we don't want to see it either for that matter, um, just to make sure. Now we hit refresh. It should be gone when I hit refresh. Yep. And then when I go mobile, it's there. Great. So that's working. So now comes the fun part. Um, first of all, when we, are, when we are in this screen, I shouldn't have to see the menu. And it should only be when I click this that I see it. So in order for that, we're actually going to have to go a little deeper. We're going to have to add some jQuery. We're going to have to add some JavaScript. And so um, one of the things that you're going to need is you're going to need to make sure that whatever website project you're on, you are connecting to jQuery. Now, fortunately, in uh, this WordPress theme, it already has jQuery connected. And let me just show you right here um, where that is in the head. Right at the top, we have two scripts of jQuery. So we have them, they're already being used. Now, if you have control over where you put the script, don't put it in the head. Put it at the right at the bottom of your page before you close um, everything. So if you look normally at the end of page, you should see some JavaScript. You'll notice, here, let me just show you right here. So you see how after this div, this div holds everything that we see. So after it is where we put the script here. So this is should be where you get your, it's here where you should have your, um, this is the area where you should have your uh, jQuery uh, script link. So that's where it should go. All right, but in our case, it's already there. We already have it connected. Um, I do want to show you that the jQuery link is actually an, an HTTP location. I didn't store it locally. So the jQuery 
on here. Um, this script is what you want to see. So if you don't have this, you can either look it up or you can just type it out as you see it on the screen. If you already got it, then we're set. What we need to do is we need to make sure now that we go ahead and um, create a JavaScript file where we can deal with this. Okay, so if you go into the folder and you look in the JS folder in here, you'll see that there is no extra JavaScript file. So we need to create a file in here and then we need to code it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just right click on the folder, choose new file, and then we're going to make it a JS JavaScript file. And then instead of script, we'll call it um, I'm going to call it HTML5 Reset Child. I don't think I'll capitalize except for the HTML5. All right, you want to copy that so you make sure you have that exactly. Click OK. Uh, we're going to deal with this in a little bit, but you want to create that file first. Okay. Then you in functions, you're going to want to load it. So see what I did in the JavaScript folder, created a new file, HTML5 Reset Child. Call it whatever you want, right? But something along the lines, this is your custom JavaScript uh, scripts that we're going to load. So in order to load it in WordPress, we go to Functions, and we're going to use this right here as our pattern. So I'm just going to copy that, hit Enter, Paste, change this name right here and change this name right here. I don't need versions, but I'll go ahead and leave true. That's supposed to drop it into the bottom. We'll see. Or maybe I have to put it as false. Either way, the name of it's right up here, HTML5 Reset Child. Well, let's call it HTML5 Reset Child like this. And then we need to match it up here. You know what? I'm going to rename that anyway. Make it all lowercase. Copy that. Paste it right there. So it's slash j js slash html5 reset child like so. Before we save it and run it, I decided to look up the WPNQ script. And I'm reminded if you give it two more arguments at the end, this one has to do with versioning. If I choose false, it'll just give it something automatic uh, based on WordPress, what version it is. And then on here, this means it should go into the footer. So I'm going to save my changes, and let's just see if that works. Hit refresh, and I'm going to view source. See if it's in the footer to begin with. And, of course, nope. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't really want to do what it says it's supposed to do. Let's see if we get the HTML5 reset child in here. There it is. Ah, right there. And it says version equals one. Go figure. All right, so we know it's it's linking now. And now comes the fun. Well, now before I go ahead and, and add all the JavaScript, I realize I'm really low on time. So I'm going to save that for the next one because this will require some serious JavaScript uh, functions and a lot of careful attention to everything we're going to do. So stay tuned for that video.